Hello, Calc Kids. This is Mr. Bean. Welcome back to another lesson in AP Calculus. Today, we're going to look at what's called the Intermediate Value Theorem, or IVT for short. This lesson is actually the concept behind the Intermediate Value Theorem. Super, super easy. In fact, it's almost like common sense. When you're done with this, you're like, yeah, duh. But the hard part is using these three justifications. We're gonna, we have to use three things that we're going to justify that allows us to use the Intermediate Value Theorem, and then we have a little conclusion statement. Okay, so that's the hard part of this, is remembering what those three justifications are, and then how to write out a conclusion statement that allows us to use Intermediate Value Theorem. Okay, so here we go. So first off, you're going to end up drawing something. Now, don't draw this yet, okay? Just leave this alone. Don't do anything with it yet. What I want you to do is, let's say we had a polynomial like this, some type of uh, graph, and I want to focus in on just this blue portion of it. So what I want you to draw is something like this, but you might actually, here, let me show you. Draw instead, maybe something that's a little bit larger so you're using more of the graph like this, okay? So take up more of the graph on yours. Don't make it quite as small as what I did. That'll give you a little bit more room for what I want you to do next. Okay, after you do that, then you're going to label this first portion of it, the first input value or x value, if you want to think of it that way, as a value of a. So the very beginning of the interval will be a, and the end of the interval will be the letter b. So we're going on an interval from a to b. So that's what we have here. If we have a function that is continuous on an interval a to b, that's that gives us the very first uh, condition for being able to use the intermediate value theorem. All right, next up, we're going to look at the output values, which is the f of a, so, or the y values, but technically output value. So the output value of f of a, and then the output value of f of b, those two values cannot equal each other. So if you have the beginning of the interval and the end of the interval, if the output values are greater than or less than each other, then you're good to use the intermediate value theorem. So we have to check those two boxes first, those, fir those first two conditions. And then the last thing is we're going to have this C value. So I'm just going to take some, um, some value C that's in between A and B, and I'm going to say that F of C is, has to be in between F of A and F of B. Now this little point here, I'm also going to call it A value of k. So the y value will be a value of k. In fact, you, also, you might even consider writing that in if you want. I know this is a little confusing, but you might even say that this just equals f of c. That's what that is, that k is equal to f of c. Now, the reason we use k is just kind of helps us with shorthand here. That is saying, oh, let's go to our justification statement over here. k is going to be in between. Now, what's k in between? k is in between the two output values of f of a and f of b. That's what the value k is. Or in other words, we could have just said f of c is in between f of a and f of b. Um, all right, so if these three conditions are met, then for, for we can use the intermediate value theorem and say dot, 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 these three little dots here. What does that mean? It's a short way in math mathematics. You can just use that as saying therefore. It's kind of a fast way of saying therefore. Therefore, IVT, intermediate value theorem, applies there exists a value C between A and B. So there is a C in between A and B such that F of C equals K. What? <laughs> that is really confusing when you first read it. It's not going to be that bad. Practice this a little bit. It won't be too bad. This is what we have to do, though. So if we ever want to use intermediate value theorem, you're going to show these three justification points and write this little statement here. All right, let's do it. Let's get to practicing this. On this first problem, what we're looking at is taking this function here, and we're trying to see, does this thing ever equal 8 on this interval from A to B? From negative 1 to 5, does this equal 8? Now, one thing you could do is you could just say, okay, well, let's set this thing equal to 8 and C. But that's not what this is doing. We're not solving. We're trying to use the intermediate value theorem to see if that proves that this function has to equal 8 on the interval. All right, so the first thing we need to do we need to show the condition that the function f is continuous on negative 1 to 5. Now, how do we know that it's continuous? Because this is just a parabola. This is a polynomial. Polynomials are continuous. So f is continuous. So that's our first thing that we say. Next, we need to show that the beginning of the interval and the end of the interval have different y values. So if we plug in a negative 1 
and then we plug in this neg this excuse me positive five then we can see that they are different y values so if you just do the arithmetic here plug them in you'd see that one is a three one's a 21 and those don't equal each other so that's our second condition third condition the value eight or for in this case it's the k equals eight that thing has to be that y value has to be between the beginning y value and the end y value so let's see here the first y value is a 3, the ending y value is a 21, and our number that we're looking for is in between that. So this is our third condition. Now, since all three of these conditions are met, we've got that condition, second one, and third one. Since all of them are met, then we can use the intermediate value theorem in our conclusion statement, which is this little three dot thing, which means therefore, we say therefore, the intermediate value theorem applies and there exists a value C between negative one and five such that f of c equals eight so in other words the y value must equal eight there's some x value in between negative one and five that makes it be true and these problems are all very similar with using the justification for each of these we're looking for those three areas so let's go ahead and jump to the next one so the first statement for here we're trying to say is it continuous is h continuous on the interval what's the interval three to five so there is a discontinuity here if you notice this one here, x equals one, would have a x cannot equal one. So there is a discontinuity, but that discontinuity is not in the interval three to five. So we're okay. It's continuous on the interval three to five. So we can go ahead and write out that h is continuous on three to five. All right, second statement. We're gonna plug in three and plug in five. This time I actually did the right number, h of five. All right, so we get h of three equals one half, h of five equals one fourth. And therefore, when we when we plug in those numbers, therefore we know that h of three does not equal h of five. So we've met the second condition. So first condition met, second condition met, third condition, k equals one third is between h of three and h of five. So is this true? So one third is what we're looking for, is our k value. One half and one fourth, yeah, one third is going to be in between those. And if you don't know your fractions, I'm sorry, you might have to go back to fourth grade and practice that a little bit. Okay, and then we have our statement. Since we met all three conditions, we can therefore create a statement that says that therefore the IVT, the intermediate value theorem applies. There exists a value C between three and five such that H of C equals one third. So that just tells us that this function has to equal one third somewhere in the interval three to five. And that, so the three conditions were met, we get our conclusion statement. Uh, last piece and that is sometimes you'll have a table like this uh, and let's let you can have to use the intermediate value theorem a little a little bit differently so let's look at this one on the interval four to nine what is the fewest possible times that y equals one that f of x equals one well let's see here so we're only going from four to nine on that portion right there right uh, so from four to nine when does y equal one so when we go from three to seven it's possible that y will equal a one, you know, it might go down to one and then come back up to seven, but we don't know for sure if it does. So we can't, don't have a guarantee there. But if we go from seven to negative one, at some point, it's going to have to equal one. It's gonna go from seven all the way down to negative one. So it's gonna cross the y value of one. So the answer to this one is just one time. We know for sure it's at least once where it's going to cross a y value of one. See, that's using the intermediate value theorem without actually using all the justifications and the, and the, the conditions that we're meeting. We, this one doesn't require us to use conditions. Now here, we're gonna use conditions on this last one. So on the interval zero to four, must there be a value of x in which f of x equals two? Okay, so what are we doing here? We're doing from zero to four. Let me erase this. Zero, we're gonna start here at zero and go to four. That's that's our interval that we're using. So just be careful about that when you have these charts. Don't go from the beginning of the chart to the end of the chart, the table. Uh, all right, so does it have to equal two? Well, let's just use some common sense here first. We're starting at one. It's gonna go down to negative five and then up to positive three. Yeah, it's gonna equal two at some point in here. It has to, it's if we're going all the way up to three and starting at one. All right, so that's gonna use some justification purposes. So first justification, I had to do this kind of small. F is continuous on zero to four. We know that because it says below is a table of values for continuous function F. Okay, so we know it's continuous on that interval. Next justification, we're gonna show that F of zero does not equal F of four, right? We know F of zero is a one, F of four is a three, they don't equal. So there's my next, just, my next uh, what is it, condition, criteria. And then the last one 
is that the value k that we're looking for, in this case 2, will it ever will it ever equal a 2? Well, I know that 2 is in between f of 0 and f of 4. It's between 1 and 3. And so because of that, that lets us justify. Therefore, intermediate value theorem applies, and there exists a value c between 0 and 4, so from 0 to 4, such that f of c must equal 2. There's some c value that we can plug in where the output is going to be a 2. All right, that's it for, for the intermediate value theorem, that your justification statements or conditional statements, and then the conclusion that you have to make with that. All right, good luck. Rock that mastery check. And uh, this is the last lesson in this unit. So rock the mastery check and the test, and we'll see you back in unit two.